Hello and welcome to Hattie the Creator. I am Hazzy. I am Hattie. I am Hattie, as you may have guessed. And today we will be using SculptGL again. It's a fun tool and it's free and accessible, so I like to play with it a lot. Uh, our goal for today is to create a creature with some fur texturing. We will be using some alpha brushes, alpha materials, and alpha mats, whatever you call them. Yeah. Few names. Pixel Logic actually has a library of free alpha brushes and alpha materials that you can use for free. I will link that in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Let's jump into it and see what we come up with. So to kick things off, we need a model. So I'm trying to do something quick, but I end up probably taking longer than I should have and putting too much detail into this thing. But I was trying to find or trying to build a simplistic character with just a small body that we could throw some hair onto. So this video sped up quite a lot, it's at 2000% so this whole probably hour long process is condensed down to a minute or two so we'll just rush through this and move on to the next part. Giving him some quick eyeballs like I've done in other videos, putting on a nice reflective material making it white more eyeball like. Putting in some detail around the them biters he got there. This big old overbite from underneath. He's got these big old chompers sticking up. So right here I'm trying to give him a crease to kind of outline where I want the hair to be and where it not to be. So his face will be uh, like a skin texture and then the rest of his body will be the hair, the fur that I'm trying to accomplish with this video. I sculpt out some hands on a separate sphere and I end up giving up on them. It's kind of tricky to do hands just from scratch and using creases and stuff to mold those perfectly. And I do the first one okay and then I try to flip it. You can't really flip something in Sculpt GL where it would, you know, because his thumb's going to be towards the camera on both hands. So you can't really mirror the, the sphere. You can replicate it and spin it around, but you can't mirror it or flip it horizontally like you would in like, I don't know, ZBrush and stuff. You can do that, but Sculpt GL is a little limited on some of its attributes and abilities, so I end up giving up on these hands and throwing them away. I thought about just taking this whole section out of the video, but I figured it was important to kind of show you the process and to just show you, you know, we make mistakes all the time. It's okay to make mistakes and just experiment and just have fun with the process, and if you don't like where something's going, it's okay to delete it and scrap it and go back a few steps even though it's time thrown away um, it's not time thrown away in the long run because you know through every experiment you improve your skills a little bit better and your knowledge of the software and its capabilities and your limitations and all that is very important in the process the creative process from a 3d perspective though the best way probably to model hands and even his arms and stuff would be to, to do it in the t-pose straight out and do a hand you know fully extended so that way if you ever do want to animate it you can do that um, you just put some bones inside of the hand and you, then those fingers become bendable and then if you wanted to pose it for an illustration or something kind of how his hands are posed in the fist position you can do that after the fact much easier um, sculpting can be fun if you if your intention is just to sculpt and to possibly Possibly create an illustration or an image from your sculpture then awesome sculpt away in positions that you want them in but if you have any other motivations for the characters you're creating it's best to do a t-pose or a, a position where you can easily rig them up and put some bones inside of them and start bending and positioning him that way after the model is all rigged and, and malleable so I like these hands much better he kind of looks like uh, like a young version of the Muncher 3D model I made in another video. Looks like he could be his, his kid. He has kind of a funny skeleton. I envision his arms attaching into his skull and having like arm sockets on the side of his skull and having like a little mini skeleton in there. I'll explore his skeleton just a little bit. It's important to think about, you know, like his anatomy and his skeleton while you're forming him to make him a believable character. And that's something that you should keep in mind with every character. What might their skeleton look like? Is it plausible for them to to, to move around and stuff and you know do they would they work would it be functional and all that stuff is, is important to think about in your creative process too it's kind of hard to see what i was trying to explain from this front view so this side view makes it a little bit more apparent kind of what it would look like with this arm socket like attached right here on the side of his skull and be able to move around and stuff and then have like a little mini skeleton some rib cage i'm assuming this guy is probably 
mostly stomach. This big old mouth, he probably eats a ton, and then his, I'd imagine he gets swole, gets kind of puffed up and um, bloated when he eats based on the quantity that he's probably eating. I just envision this guy swallowing a, like a whole goat or like a deer or something, just throwing the whole thing in his mouth and then digesting it slowly over time. So he's got this big extruding lower jaw, probably opens up pretty wide, pretty malleable in there, flexible. I'm noticing his back spine is going to look a little awkward, his little hips. So maybe he's, he's got sort of, some sort of connector in the middle as well, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing with these creatures, you're, you're the creator of them, so they don't have to fit the human anatomy. So he probably has a spine in the back. You can see on the back he's got some spinal bones that are extruding a bit. This rib cage protecting his, eye, his organs in there. And it's probably pretty flexible for when he shoves his stomach full of food. I'll do a quick little draw over on his back too. He's got these shoulder blades that I didn't really account for from the back view. It's kind of fun doing these skeleton drawings too just to give you an idea of what's going on inside. Just as you draw these creatures, things to think about to make him more believable. Now that we've explored his anatomy and we have him pretty much ready to start texturing, it's time to grab some alpha brushes that we are going to use to texture his fur. So I mentioned briefly at the beginning of this video that Pixelogic has a library of these alpha brushes. So if you click the link in the description below, you can get to this website and see all these alpha brushes and download any that you want to play with. We are looking for a fur one. I don't see a good fur one in this library. There's a lot of good stuff in here, like especially skins and scales, that kind of stuff. There's tons of that in here. But fur, I just did a quick Google image search and I found a couple of fur brushes to play with. For the sake of experimentation and teaching though, I've just grabbed a few of these brushes to mess around with really quick and just kind of show you the effects that you can get with them. To utilize these in SculptGL, you want to make sure you have the brush tool selected. And then down here by the texture, you have this drop down. The default is just the square and the skin. And then you can import more with the import button here. Another thing to be aware of is if you do not have this lock position checked, you're just going to be drawing with that brush like you would in like Photoshop. It's not really going to give you the texture how you how you would expect it, but when you, if you have this lock position in place, then it's click and drag, and you can drag it up bigger and scale it however you want, and this gives you a more ideal usage of these alphas. So here's the brushes that I grabbed really quick from that ZBrush library. I'm going to take this scale looking one and show you how it works on this model. You can really quickly start to have some really nice details and it's quite a big shortcut instead of having to sculpt all this by hand. The reason why these brushes are surrounded by black is that's just like the feathering to help it blend into the rest of the model. So already I have kind of a cool backbone or scaly spine on some sort of reptile or a dragon and then if I go in and choose these smaller scales I can fill in the sides and already this is looking pretty fleshed out and you know if I took the time to you know make it a form and then put these on it would look really cool. Lastly here's some fur which is what we want to put on our model that we were creating and you can see you already have some of the texturing done and it looks like hair which is what we're looking for. So jumping back to our model I did do a texturing on him with one fur brush that I ended up not recording on accident but I didn't like it anyway so you can kind of see it looks a little bit like hair but not really. So I found a better brush and we're going to go ahead and go back to our save before we added this to him and do it from scratch and that way you can watch the process. So now I have a clean slate and I kind of used that last model as an experiment to kind of test out some of the different brushes and find one I liked. The one I liked the best kind of looks like this bear fur and it kind of has like these big clumpy groups together that gives it a really fuzzy look and it has this long, longer strands and I thought it looked good and it would work good on this model. So now you just drag out clumps and put the brush around, stamp it on there. And remember to turn off symmetry for the parts that are in the middle. You don't want to overlap the texture twice and kind of get too much texturing going on. Also, it's good to turn symmetry off sometimes, especially with hair, because hair is never symmetrical. It's always going to be different one side to the other. You know, sometimes you get a little too comfortable with the symmetry turned on. I know I do. This guy is like 100% symmetrical, except for with some of the hair now. But it's good to, you know, turn that off after you have the basic structure down and give him some more personality and make some unique touches to each side of his, of his face and stuff but I didn't do that. I'm trying to do that now a little bit with the hair but I am also using this symmetry as a shortcut quite a bit still so 
just experimenting and placing this hair all around them. This is still just texturing though on clay. I, eventually I'd love to learn some blender and do real hair and I played around with it a little bit on this model after doing this one and maybe a future video I'll experiment and, and do a video on that once I get it down and master it. I know it's a lot more taxing because you're literally rendering individual hairs and to really give them that full look he's gonna have probably like 250,000 strands of hair coming off of them so it's pretty taxing on the CPU I don't have a super computer or anything and it's a de decent laptop that I'm working off of but it's not like a powerhouse or anything after messing with it though you really appreciate the Pixar movies like Monsters Inc where Sully's covered in hair and it looks so good I mean that movie is pretty old too but the new movies that come out it just looks phenomenal Phenomenal what they can do. It's so cool. It took me literally like a half hour to render one image with just experimenting. So I can't imagine how long those movies took to render in the HD for 4K formats that they're in. After I got all the hair on him, he was looking like Frankenstein. His head was like very squared on top. So I rendered that out a little bit and needed to adjust the eyes to accommodate that. So now I'm pretty happy with how he looks. He looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting him and putting some color on him. What I love about sculpting though is how easy that was. I mean, he was pretty much done and I adjusted his head shape quite a bit at the end, end stages. That's how flexible the sculpting is. You can still move it and retain all the texturing you just did. It's just really cool that you can still maintain all that information and move things around. I, like structure, structural big things that like in a digital painting or something, you basically have to redo everything. So that's awesome. As far as coloring goes, I just did a base color and then I did some like a little bit lighter, did some highlights, try to get the clumps of hair that were up higher and highlight those. And then I went in with a little bit darker blue and try to get the creases and the indents in the hair just to kind of make it look more hair-like. Doing the same thing with the skin, with the highlights, and just going over them. I'm not going super detailed held just a few different shades in each in each area and just trying to flush them out a bit trying to add some skin tones where the bone or the nails and stuff connect to his body to show some flesh exposed underneath the hair that looks kind of good as much as you can get on a 3d model like this bringing together the nails and the teeth just kind of polishing him up and he's just about there now I'm gonna mess with the eyes I love the black eyes black eyes are pretty cool on these models but for whatever reason whenever I try to draw in some pupils they just never look right I guess it's better to use like HD eyeballs or eyeball textures or the paint them in Photoshop and bring them in or to do it after the fact in Photoshop but for whatever reason when I try to do it inside of here it just looks goofy so just grabbing some quick screenshots of him in some different angles and here he is our final completed character with some fur i'd love to take as homework some exploration and learning in blender to do real hair and maybe do a video on that with the same creature in the next coming weeks but i'm happy with how he looks considering we just used sculpt gl and painted him and textured them all in there i think he passes as a furry creature and also i want to challenge you to give it a try go experiment a little bit play with some alpha textures and see what you come up with i'd love to see your creations and thanks for hanging out see you on the next video